Well, good morning, church. Pastor Kyle here. Thank you for joining me again for the Daily Word. We're going to continue our study in the book of Acts. We'll be in chapter 13. And uh, as I've said the last few days, we're going to be switching our focus in the book of Acts from the ministry of Peter uh, to the ministry of Paul. And it kind of follows the contour of what Jesus had said that you would take the gospel from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to all the world. And Peter's main focus was to the Jews, to his, his region, his people in Jerusalem and in Galilee and those areas. And Paul is now going to take the gospel to the Gentiles and to the Jews, but mostly to the Gentiles around the world. So that's what we see here in chapter 13. It's a long chapter, but I want you to see a couple of interesting things here. We want to keep our focus on the fact that the Holy Spirit commissions his people for ministry. We want to see that he will differentiate his people from false teachers. And we want to see that God is faithful to fulfill every single Old Testament promise, as we'll see a couple uh, outlined here from Paul's message. So we want to start here. Uh, it says, now there were at Antioch in the church there, prophets, teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, um, uh, and Manan, and a few others. And the, the Holy Spirit comes in the midst of these men and he says, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. And so then when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on these men and they sent them on their way. Now they waited because they wanted to make sure they're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, not their own imaginations, not their own heads, not a different spirit. Every, uh, there are other spirits who speak. So we want to make sure we're hearing the voice of God. So after fasting and praying and laying on of hands, they send these men out. And so what's happening, they're in Antioch, which is kind of at that, that north uh, kind of coast of, of Turkey where it turns around the Mediterranean coast. And they go down from here to Seleucia, which is just south of there, about 100 miles or so, in a province called the Hattay province. And they make sail from there to go over to Cyprus, which is an island in the eastern Mediterranean. So it says here that they land in Cyprus. They began to proclaim the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. So this is where it's going to start. They're going to get the ground swell here. And they also had John as their helper. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, so this is from the far eastern tip to the far western tip. They had crossed and zigzagged the whole island and ministered and sp spread the gospel to the whole island. They encounter a false teacher named Bar-Jesus, who was uh, with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence. This man summoned Paul and Barnabas because he wanted to know what was going on and who these guides were, and they wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the magician, for so his name is translated, was opposed to them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from them. So he's spreading rumors and lies, and he's, he's got this guy's ear, and he has a, vo a, a, a position of power, and he wants to, to keep them from, from in, in encroaching on that. So, you know, Paul gets in his face, and he says, You son of the devil how how long are you going to make crooked the straight ways of the lord he's basically rebuking him publicly and what happens is he says uh and so you will be stricken blind and not see the sun for a time and this is an interesting thing it's not vindictive paul's not being mean here what's happening is the holy spirit is differentiating for the proconsul and for everyone who's watching who is a false teacher and who is a true teacher and this is how it happened before the bible was written so right now acts is being recorded uh, you know, and it'll, it, it, Luke is kind of keeping track of early church history, but there's no Bible to measure somebody's words. And so if this guy claims to be a teacher of God and this guy claims to be a teacher of God, who is true and who is right? Well, the Holy Spirit comes and gives demonstrations of miraculous giftings and power through the individual to validate their ministry. And so that's what happens here. And the proconsul here is uh, Sergius Paulus is very impressed and he wants to hear more. And so then Paul and Barnabas are allowed to continue their ministry and it flourishes. So it says, now Paul and his companions put out to sea from Paphos and came to Perga, which is on the, if you just went due north from Paphos to the, co to the north coast or to that coast of Turkey, uh, that's where they go. And then they, they are doing some ministry there. And then they, uh, they continue up into uh, kind of the, uh, the Midlands. So if you just went up into the middle country there and uh, they're doing some ministry here. And Paul begins to preach here, and he has a sermon that's very, very similar to what Peter preached at Pentecost. He's going, he's speaking to the Jews, men of Israel, he says. These are the guys in the synagogues. Let me tell you our history from Abraham to the prophets. That way you know I know what I'm talking about, and I will show you how Jesus 
is the fulfillment of all of these messianic prophecies that we see all the way from Abraham, the seed of Abraham, uh, making a nation, a, a nation of people for God's own possession, all the way down through the, the times of the judges and ap appointing kings and bringing David as the king, and then saying that a, a descendant of David will rise up uh, and he will um, accomplish the work of being a Messiah. David, it says here, David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my own will. Uh, this is a descendant of David who's coming down. And from this descendant, it says, according to the promise, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. After John had proclaimed him and coming for baptism of repentance for the people of all of Israel, while John was completing his course, he kept saying, who do you suppose that I am? I am not he, but behold, the one who is coming after me. So even John, so he's appealing to another prophet. We had 400 years of silence from Malachi to John. And then even now the news, the newest prophet is saying the same thing. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Messiah is here and I'm not him, but the one who comes after me. So then brethren, sons of Abraham family, and those among you who fear God, Paul is saying here, there's always been Jews who feared the Lord. Right? There's always been those who've, who've had the faith of Abraham, that faith that justifies, placing their faith in the future Messiah, saying the Messiah is here. Now, Jesus, this is the one whom, in whom you must place your faith. Uh, and they're saying that, you know, this, this is the one that the very Jews condemned and they found him guilty, put him to death. They asked Pilate to execute him. They carried it out. God raised him from the dead. Uh, he appeared to, to many in Jerusalem and he said, uh, this fulfills Psalm 2. You are my son, for to, uh, today I have begotten you. And then again, he says, I will give you the holy and, uh, blessings of David, and you will not allow your holy one to undergo decay. He's so, show, Paul is showing them that, that Jesus fulfilled all of these things. Um, and he's just laying down this great apologetic. He's saying, for David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep or he died and was laid among his fathers and underwent decay. So we're not talking about David. We're talking about his descendant here. And then it says, therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him, through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And through him, everyone who believes is freed from all things, freed from transgression of the law, freed from being a slave to sin. And then Paul says, uh, he's quoting from Habakkuk here. And he says, behold, you scoffers and you marvel and perish for I'm accomplishing a work in your days, uh, a work which you will never believe, though someone should describe it to you. Paul's saying, I'm that somebody, I'm describing it to you. And there's going to be lots of you who don't believe. But for those of you who are the true sons of Abraham, Jesus is your Messiah. And Paul and Barnabas were going out and the people kept begging these, that they'd hear these things uh, to them on the next Sabbath, teach them to these things on the next Sabbath. So the next Sabbath, it says, uh, nearly the whole city assembled to hear the word of the Lord. But then the, 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 the hardcore Jews, the, the temple Jews, uh, saw the crowds and they were filled with jealousy and they began condemning uh, and contradicting the things spoken by Paul and blaspheming them. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and they proclaimed it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. Since you repudiate it and you judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, behold, we are turning to the Gentiles for the Lord has commanded us. And they go straight to Isaiah 49 and they say, I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, of course, they marveled. They began rejoicing and glorifying God as, as they had been appoint, appointed to eternal life, and they believed. But the Jews incited the devout women of prominence uh, and, and, and stirred up the synagogue loyalists, and, and they drove Paul and Barnabas out of the city. And so those, those loyal few who repented and believed were left behind and Paul and Barnabas shook the dust off their feet and they moved on and it said they moved on to Iconium another part of Asia Minor there Turkey and they the disciples were continually filled by the Holy Spirit and by joy as Paul and Barnabas were sharing the message with them so we see the Holy Spirit laying the foundation of his work uh, we see him using Paul and Barnabas faithfully him attesting to them as true and faithful apostles the fulfillment of prophecy and many, many 
uh, Gentiles now coming to know the truth about Jesus and repenting and believing in him. And so, yeah, you may very well hear a sermon on Isaiah 49 later, uh, but just be encouraged in that passage, that that passage is meant for you. If you're a Gentile, if you're like many of us who don't come from the Jewish heritage, that the gospel was entrusted to them, uh, but then it was brought to the, to the ends of the earth by faithful ministers of the gospel. Uh, so that's our heritage right there. We have the gospel because of Paul and Barnabas' faithful planting of the seeds of missions work and building churches in Gentile communities. So amen. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, thanks for listening, and I will see you tomorrow morning for Acts 14. Have a blessed day.